All right, good evening to everybody. Thanks for clicking on to the Tuesday edition of Vogan's European Outlook. For the past few months now, it feels like anyway, we have been very closely monitoring the activity taking place on the island of Iceland. And this was the very moment that uh, we have essentially all been waiting for. And this is the eruption on the Rekajanes Peninsula. I hope that is the right pronunciation. Uh, we do have a, a major eruption now taking place in the southwestern corner of Iceland. And I thought it would be an interesting start to tonight's video by showing you this and uh, seeing what is going on uh, up in Iceland. This was another spectacular image of the eruption. Now we can see, um, just bear with me a second. Look at this here. Just. Um, Spectacular, beautiful, scurry, all I suppose rolled into one. But this is what is happening up in Iceland at this very moment in time. And of course, our thoughts and prayers are with the folks up in Iceland at this moment. Um, we hope that everybody is safe and well up there. I want to look actually at um, what's going on within the stratosphere, first of all, because uh, I haven't looked at it in the last few days, but there is still a lot going on away up at 10 millibars above our heads, above the Arctic. And if we play through this very latest run of the GFS operational, you can see the stretched nature of the PV as we school through towards the Christmas period. Look at how... It's becoming stretched out, elongated from, you know, North Atlantic, Central North Atlantic, all the way across the center of Asia. And then as we continue to play through this animation, you can see some very strong warming now starting to show up over Eurasia. And then that, at the very end of the loop, then it kind of bends towards the pole. And this could be the signs of a major SSW developing towards the early and middle portion of January. This would be within the time frame that uh, coincides with the winter forecast. So we'll continue to monitor this as we go forward. Of course, there is a lot still to happen before we get to anything particularly exciting. But I wanted to show you that nonetheless. Now, this is the 50 millibar level here within the lowest portion of the stratosphere. So this is essentially where the stratosphere meets the upper portion of the troposphere. And you can see the strong warming taking place from the North Pacific to North Atlantic here. And this would be indicative of high latitude blocking over the Arctic and towards the North Atlantic. That would essentially, if it couples properly between stratosphere and uh, troposphere, you would expect to see and it's all ifs, buts, and maybes. I, I know that. But you would expect to see a potential of a strong block in, uh, developing over the North Atlantic and over Greenland some point during the mid to second half of January. Uh, that would be my, uh, my, my thinking anyway. Another aspect that has to be looked at is the Manjulian Oscillation. We've rotated through the warm phases. We've seen the result of that and the strong warming over particularly North America, over Western Europe. And uh, we've seen some really crazy up and down swings in between record warmth and record cold over eastern portions of Asia. We've seen outstanding warm December temperatures initially over eastern China, including Beijing, temperatures rocketing into the, in the 20s, exceptionally unusual for this time of the year. Then we were slapped by a, a very potent cold front that swept through and dropped the temperature to the lowest levels for Beijing since 1971, a temperature of minus 15 Celsius. So going from plus 20s into the minus 10s in the space of a week, just crazy stuff. Same happened through the Koreas and Japan. Record-breaking December warmth. Now we're seeing very very cold conditions sweeping through and i do believe this is a enhancing mountain torque influence and that warming taking place within the stratosphere it's all connected folks and uh, between the mjo and also 
what's going on within the stratosphere. I, I believe anyway that everything is working hand in hand, but it has to all come together. And that has to be remembered and taken into consideration. So this is the here and now. I want to look a little bit about what's going on at the moment across the, the European continent. Very deep area of low pressure, as you can see, over Scandinavia, over Finland here. We've got the strong area of high pressure out over the North Atlantic. And we have got that cold northwesterly airflow. That then corresponds to a, a you know, cold polar maritime um, airflow. As you can see, we've seen snow showers over the higher elevations of Scotland through the course of today as we play through this loop. You can see those snow showers, rain showers at low levels moving from northwest to southeast, as you can see within that northwesterly airflow. Then we've got a frontal system that moves through during the course of tomorrow. So that's the next front moving in. Low pressure is going to dominate the Christmas period. But the question is, where is these areas of low pressure going to go? Are they going to move further south? Are they going to go further north? Or what the timing of when that frontal system moves in? Ahead of the frontal system, we've got mild conditions. Behind it, we've got colder conditions. Nothing particularly exceptional, but colder nonetheless. And then as we move towards the late Wednesday into Thursday time frame, we're going to have very strong winds coming in from a northwesterly direction. And you can see here the shower activity. You can see these band features setting up here. Underneath those bands, you might see some very heavy torrential rain, very gusty winds associated with that as well. And this is not due to a direct deep area of low pressure moving across the UK and Ireland. It's actually the gradient between a very deep low pressure system near Scandinavia and a very powerful area of high pressure over the North Atlantic. It's that tight gradient that then increases the squeeze in the pressure field. And we see those very powerful winds in response to that. Let's have a look and see what uh, kind of wind gusts we're expecting to see from this situation here. So it's been windy over the last day or so. And uh, we've also seen some very, very warm conditions also. But if I can get to the right chart, it would certainly help. And we'll get to see how strong those winds are going to be. Now, I think 50, 60, even 70 miles an hour is possible. This is 2 o'clock on Thursday morning. We've got wind gusts seen by the UKV model in excess of 70 miles an hour across the northwest of Scotland here. Then in the northern England, as the, the winds then transfer from northwest to, to southeast, you can see here that we've got wind gusts in excess of 80 miles an hour to the north, just off the north coast of Scotland here. I think over the mainland of uh, particularly the central and northern UK, 60 possibly even 70 mile per hour winds are possible with this situation here. So let's have a look and see what the pressure gradient is going to be. In fact, before we actually get there, let's have a look and see what the current temperatures are across both the UK as well as Europe here. So you can see that the UK is a, you know, cool down compared to what we've seen over the weekend and even over the course of yesterday. We've got a lack of real cold air over the majority of, of, of Europe here. And that is the case also over North America at the moment, which is quite interesting. Cold conditions up across Iceland, as you can see. And the coldest conditions anywhere in, in, in Europe is away up in the very northeast corner, the north of Scandinavia here. But there is a lack of true cold air anywhere in mainland uh, Europe at this moment in time. So uh, much milder conditions compared to what you would expect at this time of the year. Uh, looking at the UK, we've got uh, a cool down compared to what we've seen both north coast all the way down to the south coast we're still clinging on the double figures as you can see here isle of white dorset across say uh, hampshire and then all the way across to um uh, kent here all the way west to cornwall we've got temperatures hovering uh, a little bit below or a little above 10 celsius the same for ireland and northern ireland also here but let's look and see what's going to take place over the next few days here. As we play through this loop, we've got that area of low pressure moving across the top of the UK. That was uh, what generated the strong gusty winds through the course of today. Then we've got a little bump in the isobars briefly. And then you can see that the next system moving through here. So this is 
for the, through the course of this morning. Sorry, I got a little bit confused there. Actually, the way the the map changed there, uh, it it threw me a little bit. But you can see here, this is uh, by twelve o'clock. Uh, is this the right chart here? Just bear with me a second, folks. Sorry about this. So yeah, we've got the frontal system moving through across the southern UK, northwesterly winds dragging in colder air uh, from Iceland, from Greenland, but of course very very significant moderation as that air mass crosses over the warm North Atlantic here. But notice here that the pressure gradient is squeezing together as we move towards the period of late tomorrow and into Thursday morning. We've got a big 1051 millibar area of high pressure over the North Atlantic. That is allowing that northwesterly airflow. But look at this system here coming out of Iceland. Watch how it rapidly deepens as it approaches southern Scandinavia down the 956 millibars. And we've got a, a 1046 high over the North Atlantic versus a, a 956 millibar low along the Norwegian coast. Messy conditions, squally cold front moving through. But look at the squeeze in the isobars. That is that cold, stinging northwesterly air flow. Remember the source of this air mass is coming in from Greenland and Iceland. So it's going to feel distinctly cold with that 50, 60 mile per hour wind coming in from a northwesterly direction here. So as we play through the loop, you can see wintry precipitation, especially mid to high ground here, low levels, it will probably fall as rain, maybe a wintry mix actually. And then as we continue to play through the loop, this is off the latest run of the ECMWF. Remember, this is the operational model, so it's only one individual run. But you can see here that we start to flatten out the, the, the situation as we move towards Sunday, Christmas Eve, the early hours of the morning. And we've lost that northwesterly component. As I showed you in yesterday's video, the winds become more westerly. Then the air tends to stay a little bit longer over the North Atlantic. So therefore, we moderate the air mass more than what it would be coming out of the northwest here. So we've got longer time to warm up over the North Atlantic. So it's going to be a very tough call. Now, you notice here that the latest run of the ECMWF during the course of Christmas Eve, it has a frontal system moving through. We will see a cooling down of the air mass during the course of Christmas Day. Let's look at the 850 temperature chart. You can see what I'm talking about here. This is where fine margins come into play here. And uh, you can see the 850s. So you notice that they're marginally cold. The start of the day, it's mild, especially across England and Wales, a little bit colder across the north. As that frontal system moves through, we've got colder air moving in, but you notice here this area of low pressure to the west of and southwest of the UK, that is going to be pulling in something milder also. So this is by the time we reach 6 o'clock on Boxing Day, and it's going to be a very tough call. As I've already said, the greatest chance of seeing snow anywhere from late, uh, late Christmas Eve into Boxing Day will be across more northern areas of the UK, England, and Wales largely with the exceptions of high ground will not see any snow I don't think anyway on Christmas day but you notice here that mild air moves north then it's cut off by another cold front moving in and you get the overall idea so very very back and forth and I think you're increasing the chance of, of seeing little in the way of snow away from Scotland let's have a look at the the GFS model here for the same time frame and uh, we've got that cold northwesterly air flow, milder, never too far away from the south. Saturday the 23rd, we've got that milder westerly air flow coming in. Then as we move into Christmas Day, we've got colder air seen by the GFS moving further south across the UK. Let's have a look and see what it's uh, projecting with regards to snow depth during the course of Christmas Day, just out of interest, and see what it's showing. So, uh, yeah, it's not showing a great deal, even on Christmas Day itself. Very little in the way of snow. Finally, let's have a look at the, the, the CFSV2. Week 1 into Week 2 looks as if we've got a largely westerly airflow. It also indicates that temperatures will be slightly colder than average across the north, warmer across the south. This is the, the upcoming seven days. So this is the 18th through the 25th, warmer uh, across the board and then slightly cooler across the, the north of Scotland uh, for the week two. 
all to play for. Keep it right here in the channel. Like, share, and subscribe. See you again tomorrow with more. Bye for now.